In the last video we saw that object-oriented inheritance is good up to a point and the point is where we need to mix and match different uh, behaviors or bottle caps if you would into a into a game object. Okay, the temptation in this case where velocity and boundary need to be shared between ship and enemy uh, we could push velocity and boundary handling up to the game object, but then that forces the lurper to have that behavior, and the lurper does not have that behavior. And Oh, what a headache. We don't like that, but that's what they taught us in object-oriented programming. So what else could we do? Well, we need a design pattern that is as flexible as this bottle cap idea. All right, we need something where I can just make a general game object. I don't care about these things down here anymore. All right, let me just get rid of them, erase, erase. Look how fast I can erase, that was mega fast. I just want to make a general game object, and if I'm making the enemy, I'll throw in some AI, I'll throw in velocity, and I'll throw in handling the boundary conditions. Okay, but if I'm making the ship, then I'm going to throw in uh, what are I going to throw in? Well, <laughs> velocity again. I guess I could have left that in there. Velocity and boundary handling. But then we're also going to add input, and we'll take out the AI like so. And then, oh, oh, but we'll also add positional and rendering to both. I missed both of those. So, so game object would also my ship in this case would also have uh, positional, positional, and rendering too. But so would the enemy. Okay, and if I'm making the lurper, well, to keep it simple, well, which it is, the lurper is simple, we would have the lurping logic, we would have the positional information, that said positional, but my hands were not centered on the keyboard, <laughs> positional, and we would have rendering as well, and so I want to be able to mix and match this behavior inside of any game object I create, I need a design pattern that is that flexible and the design pattern that does that does exactly that I've heard it called by several different names let me tell you the names I've heard it called an entity system I've heard it called a component system I've heard it called an entity and component system I've also heard it called an actor system okay same design pattern different names however the component when we say component in, in programming that that word is overloaded. There's several meanings for components. However, I like the name component for this pattern, so I'm going to stick with it. And it's an entity component design pattern. We'll we'll go with that. Essentially, what it does is allows us to to throw in behaviors as we like. Let me show you the basic idea. We make a class. I shall call it entity. That's what I've heard it called most often. Is the entity class and an entity is what you would call a game object it's essentially the thing we're going to throw in throw the bottle caps into and how do we throw the bottle caps into it well it maintains an array of components components it could be an array it can be a list it doesn't really matter some sequence of components for the most part actually that's the entire entity class so I'm I'm going to shorten it up right here and then we're going to make a component class. And it's actually a pretty straightforward class itself. Say component, component class. And then when we make our various components, for example, we had, I don't know, uh, boundary handling. Okay, we'll make a class and we'll call it boundary handling, boundary response, boundary, whatever you want it to be. Boundary stuff, it will inherit from component. And we had lurping logic. We'll put right here, lurping logic. And it also inherits from component. In fact, every bottle cap kind of thing inherits from component and just to save some room, I'll forget drawing the bottom half of these useless UML. <laughs> objects. And some of you probably cringe when I say it's useless. We also have rendering. Okay, a rendering bottle cap or component. Rendering. And guess what? In inherits from component as well. So you can imagine several things. 
inheriting from component, and all of them are the bottle caps kind of things. All right, several of these different components. And then what we do is we create a single entity. You could call this a game object, but I'll call it an entity from now on. And we mix and match, add and remove any kind of bottle caps that we want to. And these bottle caps, or these components, know how to interact with each other. I'll show you how that works. But it's really slick, because you can add a component, you can remove a component, and the behavior just comes and goes as you want. And we can mix and match. And we don't need to have one monolithic base class, as we had the problem with the pure inheritance hierarchy. We don't need to copy and paste code around, that sort of thing. We're left with just components an entity and throw in whatever components you want you will get the behavior that you desire so that's where we're going and in the next video we're going to write an entity class we're going to write a component class and in the videos after that we're going to start writing these components and see if we can get our ship and our lurper uh, moving on the screen the ship will respond to input we'll have to write some input we'll do our physics as well but then also get a lurper so that's where we're headed